53 now. Swimming is a great way to beat the heat, but it can also impact your health. We're talking about swimmer's ear. The common infections caused by water getting stuck in your outer ear canal. It can cause pain, redness, and swelling. To avoid it, doctors say they recommend keeping your ears dry by using swim caps or earplugs, for example. If you do get them wet, make sure you dry them thoroughly using a towel. Do not use cotton swabs because they can push your earwax deeper into your ear, making the problem even worse. A 54, a baseball umpire is now recovering after collapsing Ooh. on the field. Well, the Long Island Titan baseball team was live streaming their game in Georgia when it all happened. Take a look at this. It happened at the East Cobb Complex in Marietta. Oh, there he just fell over there. Mm during a national baseball championship. You can see the umpire Sorry. drop to the ground after a pitch is thrown and a coach and a nurse from New York instantly jumped into action. They say the umpire wasn't breathing when they got to him. I thought he just fainted. Um, when I got there, I, I could tell right away that it was a little more serious than that. I could tell he wasn't breathing. I took his pulse and couldn't get anything and um, started chest compressions right away. He started moving his arms and, um, you know, started moving his head a little bit, which to me was more of like a sign of life. So uh, once you, you get the sign of life, you turn them on their left side into the rescue position, which I did. And then he uh, lost consciousness again. Oh, goodness, scary times. The umpire survived thanks to their efforts. Thank goodness. They say they hope this incident inspires others to get CPR certified because you never know when you might need to help save someone's life. Talk about being at the right place at the right time. Well, many of you are already getting ready for back to school. Somebody already out at back to school right now. Blah, blah, blah. I'll come up with it. And we're right there with you. We are collecting school supplies for local students who need them. You can drop off the markers, pencils, other back to school items at 40 different Ingalls locations or right here at Fox Carolina. We're right off of Pelham Road. The last day to donate is July 29th. So the end of this week, actually, a couple more days. Mm -hmm. At the end, supplies like the ones you see on your screen, they're going to be distributed to schools across the upstate and western North Carolina. You can visit foxcarolina.com or scan the QR code that's up right now on your screen to see a list of those participating drop-off locations. And we thank you in advance for supporting our school supply jam. 856 now. If you're feeling lucky, it is time to buy a ticket. The Mega Millions jackpot is now up to 810 million bucks, and the next drawing is set for tonight. It's the fourth largest jackpot in game history. The pot has been going up since there hasn't been a winner in the last three months, y'all. The drawing will happen tonight, live right here on Fox Carolina. You see that countdown right there on your screen. We're 14 hours, six minutes, and five seconds away from that drawing. You make sure you get your tickets before and watch just before the 11 o'clock news. If you're looking for things to do this week, the dog show is coming to town. We'll tell you when you can check it out. And right now we want to give you a live look at Lake Hartwell and Anderson County looking pretty stunning on this Tuesday morning. It's showing out as you see right here on your screen. We're back with another full hour of news. See you back here soon. Not really sure. I think they're gonna give us a script. Okay.
committed to you. Fox Carolina, the morning news starts now. Monkeypox cases continue to increase across the U.S. and health officials say they're getting more concerned. What you need to know, that's coming up. Also making headlines, the Carolina Panthers are back in the upstate. We'll take you to Walford where it's move-in day for those NFL stars. But right now, we do want to say good morning. It is Tuesday, July 26th. I'm Ashley Garrett. And I'm Margaret Burnquist. Thanks for being with us on the Morning News at mm -hmm. Night. Not only do you have Panthers move-in day, everybody's watching for that, yes. um, but also Greenville Drive playing at Fleur Field tonight, some other events. But I guess the weather cycle we're in, it's just kind of heat, storm, and repeat. Rinse and repeat, as Brian likes yeah. to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, copy, paste, uh, carbon, carbon copy. copy. Yeah. yeah, you know, the drill. <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff out there for us today. So if you're headed out to any events, uh, like Margaret mentioned, the uh, Greenville drive playing tonight if uh, maybe you're hoping to go over to Wofford College I believe practices don't start till tomorrow but either way if you're gonna be outdoors this afternoon make sure you keep an eye on the skies as for first alert radar this morning we've got cloudier conditions still managing to hang on along most of the I-85 corridor this morning you get south of there toward Lawrence Greenwood and Newberry it's sunnier and it's generally sunnier in the mountains. The catch, though, is that we still have some stubborn fog hanging out around Asheville, still reporting a half mile visibility in that area. It should start to burn off here in the next hour to hour and a half. But uh, until that happens, of course, continue to use caution if you're uh, doing any mid morning traveling around those areas. Current temp up to 81 in Greenville and in Anderson right now. We're still just shy of 80 in Spartanburg, Union and Newberry and everybody now in the mountains well into the 70s as that sun starts to heat us up. Pretty typical July temperatures again for today. Low uh, 90s for highs in the upstate with highs today in the mountains hitting the mid 80s and also another round of scattered storms coming our way this afternoon. Some could become severe. I'll show you where that's most likely to happen coming up in your full forecast in about 10 minutes. But now 902 on the dot. Here's Chris with your last check of this morning's roads. Yeah, rush hour is starting to calm down a little bit. We only have two accidents out there for you across the viewing area right now. One of those Anderson County. The other one just occurred over in Greenville. Anderson County, it's US 29 around the Sandy Lane area. And then Greenville's accident is at Saluda Dam Road at Stanley Drive. We are seeing quite a bit of delay on uh, both the east and west bound lanes of uh, Saluda Dam Road just outside of the Parker community heading in and out toward easily. So uh, keep that in mind. Saluda Dam and Stanley Drive is one to watch out for. And uh, slow travel here at 85 South still. It's really not been too bad all day. It's getting a little bit crowded a few minutes ago and then it's kind of open back up again toward exit 54. All right, Chris, we thank you so much. 902 now, monkeypox is spreading in the U.S. and around the world. And according to the CDC, there are now more than 3,400 cases in the U.S. This includes 268 in Georgia, 34 in North Carolina, and 12 confirmed in South Carolina. And U.S. health officials warn the numbers will likely continue to climb. Reporter Reed Binion has the story. We should be absolutely be concerned, 100% uh, concerned. Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra laying bare the urgency of confronting the growing threat of monkeypox. As two sources familiar with internal discussions say the White House is working on naming a monkeypox coordinator amid rising case numbers. Becerra's words come after the World Health Organization declared the global outbreak a public health emergency of international concern over the weekend. The U.S. hasn't yet declared it a public health emergency. We're seeing a very unusual event. We've known monkeypox since the 1970s, but we haven't seen this level of transmission around the world. About two months after the first monkeypox infection in the U.S. was confirmed, the nation's total cases have risen to about 2,900. Two of those infections were in children, and the White House says the total number of cases is likely to go up. Would not be surprised if we see an increase in cases as testing becomes more robust. The federal government had shipped 300,000 monkeypox vaccines to states and territories as of Friday. The White House says the FDA is working to finalize approval for roughly 800,000 more doses. I'm Reed Binion reporting. And health experts say monkeypox spreads through close physical contact with an infected person or items that may be contaminated, like clothing, for example. Well, South Carolina health officials are also weighing in on this. They say if you think you've been exposed, you should contact your health care provider, local health department, or even urgent care, for example. On the Money Watch Now, economists are keeping a close eye on the U.S. Consumer Confidence Report due out this morning. Experts say they predict it fell to 97 last month, which would be the lowest level since February of last year. 
Consumer confidence has mostly fallen this year as people struggle with the highest inflation rates we've had in decades. And the Federal Reserve is expected to take some more steps to curb inflation this week. The Fed will deliver its latest interest rate policy update tomorrow. Last month, the central bank announced the biggest increase in nearly 30 years, raising rates by triple the usual amount. Experts are predicting another rate hike this week as the Fed tries to slow the economy to ease inflation. And experts do worry that raising rates too aggressively will trigger a recession. Here's what's happening right now. Families that need help with diapers can sign up for free assistance from Prisma Health. The Children's Hospital's Diaper Bank provides free diapers for kids up to four years old. Now, families must be eligible for WIC, SNAP, or Medicaid in order to qualify. The next distribution event will be on August 20th, and registration just opened at 9 this morning, about six minutes ago. There are only 500 slots available. You can call the number you see there on your screen. You see that in the upper right there to find out more information on this. Happening now, the Carolina Panthers are moving into the upstate. Training camp officially kicks off tomorrow. And right now, the players are moving into their temporary homes on the Wofford College campus. Fox Carolina Sports Director Beth Hull is there live to show us how it's going. What's the action out there, Beth? Oh, well, players are starting to move in this morning. Move in started about 8 a.m. this morning. By 8.19, we already had our first Baker Mayfield sighting of the training camp season. Moving in alongside Shaq Thompson, his chauffeur, uh, Baker Mayfield, saying he gave that Uber driver five stars on his delivery. The two of them moving in, some of the first ones to find their way to campus, uh, where they'll spend the next couple of weeks preparing for this next football season. A lot of confidence right now among the Panthers coaching staff, the front office, about the team that they've been able to put together are, and are expecting to compete. A major part of that competition will obviously be at the quarterback position. Baker Mayfield, a big piece of that, joining the roster just a couple of weeks ago, joining veteran and starting quarterback uh, Sam Darnold from last season. The two of them both speaking about the confidence and the camaraderie that they're already starting to build amongst each other. They actually got together, we're told, last week with Christian McCaffrey, uh, start running back to start to build some of that confidence and some of that camaraderie amongst themselves in that quarterback room. Head coach Matt Rule, confident in the ability of this room to be able to compete against each other, really heighten the level of competition and put their best foot forward as they all compete for that starting quarterback job in just a few weeks as that NFL season will get underway. As for Shaq Thompson, obviously moving in with Baker Mayfield, he's a big talking point as well. The veteran linebacker coming back this year here uh, on that pup list to start off on the uh training camp, I was about to say preseason, that training camp roster uh, as he had a little bit of cleanup to do uh, in that knee. So he'll be back here providing his confidence, his leadership, uh, and really starting to build into that next year and the third year for head coach Matt Rule as he looks to get a few more wins and a little bit more confidence from the community around him. We have plenty more coverage coming throughout. Practice starts tomorrow, 11:15. That first practice open to the public. Gates open about 90 minutes before practice begins. For now, reporting with the Panthers, Beth Hool, Fox Carolina News. Beth, thank you. We love the action out there at training camp. Looking forward to it. And if you're looking for things to do this week, Greenville Drive, Greenville Drive baseball kicking off a six-game series against Bowling Green tonight at Fleur Field. First pitch is 7:05 to take in that game. And then the Carolina Foothills Dog Show returning to the Greenville Convention Center. This is one of the biggest shows on the East Coast, if you didn't know that. Hundreds of dogs come from all over the country to compete. The uh, competition begins at 8 o'clock Thursday morning and goes through Sunday. Really fun show to watch, too, and it is free to attend. Comedian Daryl Hammond performing in Greenville this weekend. Regular cast member on Saturday Night Live for 15 years, starting in 1995, and he's currently the show's announcer. Daryl Hammond will have five performances at the Comedy Zone Friday through Sunday. Tickets are $25 and $35. Should be a fun one. And the wait is almost over for Adele fans. More than six months after her Vegas residency was postponed, the singer says her show is ready to go on. Plus, the Blood Connection asking you to roll up your sleeves. We'll tell you where you can donate this week and get some, some freebies in return. And an uptick in diabetes that's especially alarming, plus obesity. It has doctors concerned about diabetes, some lifestyle changes that can help coming up.
and a live look for you over Tryon as we head to break. Hope your day's off to a great start. Glad you're with us. You're watching Fox Carolina, committed to you. The following segment is sponsored by Oakview Medical Associates. In medicine, doctors are seeing so much diabetes and obesity. Some call it diabetes. Dr. Nita Bashur is here from Oakview Medical Associates to talk about it this morning. Hi, Dr. Nita. Hi, Margaret. How are you? Good. It's good to see you. You too. Um, you are board certified in family medicine, obesity medicine, and lifestyle medicine, but you're, you're just extremely well versed then overall on the diabetes epidemic. What are you seeing? Well, we're seeing a lot of diabetes. Um, it's on the rise. I'm picking up a lot of diabetics every day in our practice. There are about 40 million diabetics in the U.S. There are about 100 million pre-diabetics. Those are that means you are not you don't have that lab value that meets the diabetes diagnosis, but you are on the verge of uh, becoming a diabetic. Yeah. And uh, by 2050, they say there'll be about 100 million diabetics in the U.S. That's one-third of our population. Wow. And, yeah. and at the root of the problem, you've always said that our calorie consumption, that's really an indicator of what's yes. happening, isn't it? Yes. In type 2 diabetes, which is linked to insulin resistance, the more sugar intake you have, your insulin works really hard to bring down that sugar or glucose in your bloodstream. And after a while, insulin can only do so much. So you tire out your insulin. That's the term we call insulin resistance. And then your sugar stays up in the bloodstream, and that can be very detrimental, very life-threatening, uh, in fact. So really um, getting to know how you develop diabetes and what you can do to control it is mm -hmm. the key. And having a sweet tooth, you know, that, that really right. is a big thing with this diabetes problem. Um, our sugar intake has been going up in a way, I don't think people realize how much sugar they consume without thinking about it. Right. I think overall, you know, sugar is basically very refined. So that leads to our processed foods. Our American diet has about 63% of it is processed foods. 25% is it comes from meat. About a 12% is plant-based only. Out of the process, 6% comes from candied apples and candied almonds and things like that. Mm -hmm. So when you look at sugar consumption overall, they found in the last 100 years, our population, uh, the average American has increased their consumption of sugar by 80 pounds per year. That's crazy. Uh, 
up. oil has gone up by 70 pounds per year and cheese has gone up by 25 pounds per year so now and of course our watching television has gone up by four hours a day so these are all factors that you know we can do data and analytics and see and that's real so i tell my patients these numbers because then it really makes it very real to them and yeah. they can feel that they can do something about it. You know? well, and it really, you know, it's all about lifestyle. You talk yep. about the lifestyle choices we make. Um, lifestyle is the cause and the cure for type 2 diabetes and other 100%. diseases. Anything else to, uh, to consider about that before we go? Yeah, I think, you know, we hear it a lot. There's a lot of media uh, awareness. There's a lot of education on the internet. But really finding that physician and that provider team that can make you accountable is the key. In our office, we have a gym on site. We have personal trainers, a health coach. Uh, every one of my providers is all in tune with making sure the patient understands the things we can do to improve our health. Because we, you know, we all have a limited lifespan. I think really quality of life is most important. One thing can go wrong, and we see it in our patients where then they can't drive, they cannot, you know, they're just the whole life, the whole calendar is filled with doctor's appointments. Who wants mm -hmm. that? Like yeah. we really want to make you aware that if you take this in your uh, hands, you can lead a very healthy, productive life and lead, need less of us yes. as providers. So. And that just shows the kind of practice you are. <laughs> you know, you have that gym in there. You want to get people yes. moving. You want to get people the, the keys to their own health right. back. So right. um, people love to work with you, Dr. Nita. You are at 11 Five Forks Plaza Court in Simpsonville. Mm -hmm. The number on screen, 627-0444. Dr. Nita Bajor from Oakton Medical Associates. Thank you so much for You're being welcome. here. You're welcome. Thank you. Now your Fox Carolina first alert weather. 916 now. Good Tuesday morning. Once again, everybody starting to see some hints of the clouds breaking up that have been hanging out over the upstate here this morning. Live look over Lake Hartwell, where it is still a mostly cloudy sky, no doubt. But if you look kind of closer to the foreground, some of the boats, it looks like we at least have some sun managing to filter on through. Beyond that, just about all of our other weather conditions out there this morning are about the same where they've been the last several mornings. There's those clouds over I-85 here starting again to thin out here on first alert radar. More sun in the mountains helping to finally burn off a lot of that leftover fog. Now that the sun is breaking out and we have the heat and humidity in place, it's not going to take long here, probably by midday, where we'll begin to see our uh, showers and storms flaring back up here. But fortunately, we're going to dodge a lot of this, frankly, tremendous rain that has been coming down anywhere from St. Louis this morning and now all the way into parts of uh, northern Kentucky. St. Louis alone has picked up over eight inches of rain just since midnight. Tremendous amounts of rain there. Flash flood emergencies going on. That boundary is going to keep that large swath of moisture well north of us, but it is still close enough that we'll see at least a little bit more. Uh, in the way of scattered shower and thunderstorm activity this afternoon as a result. So in the next 24 hours, future track, here we go. We see the clouds burn off quickly, whatever's left out there at this point. Showers and storms wasting no time beginning to get going by noontime today, continuing in kind of that same hit or miss variety that we've seen time and time again this month. Uh, that is, we head through the 3 o'clock and even 6 o'clock hour this evening. They'll start to then uh, lose their punch and uh, die off pretty quickly as we then head into the overnight period. Some patchy fog settles in again overnight. We start off dry tomorrow morning and more uh, storms come back in on Wednesday afternoon, but likely to be a bit more isolated tomorrow uh, than they will be out there today. Watch out for the potential of some damaging winds, though, with those storms, especially from Greenville on northward this afternoon. And do keep that in mind if you're maybe thinking about a trip to the lake today. Highs will be in the mid 80s to low 90s. Water temps getting up there too, low to mid 80s, a hot and humid day giving way to those spotty afternoon and evening thunderstorms. And that's pretty much still the name of the game all the way through the end of the weekend and into the start of August. Now on Monday, we'll stay in the highs in the 90s uh, through the start of the weekend in the upstate before going back to the 80s by Monday. And the mountains, not a ton different. Isolated to scattered storms each of the next uh, seven days with your highs staying in the low to mid 80s. Ashley. All right, Brian, well, thank you so much. It is coming up on 919 on your Tuesday morning. And in this morning's entertainment headlines, actor Paul Servino, some sad news, has died at the age of 83. His publicist says he died from natural causes. Servino's probably most remembered role was for portraying Paul Cicero in Goodfellas. But his career spent decades with roles in Nixon, Dick Tracy, and Reds. And he also earned a Tony nomination for the play That Championship Season. Servino is survived by his wife, three children, and five grandchildren. One of his children, Oscar-winning actress Myra Servino, tweeted about the death of her father, saying in part, quote, A life of love and joy and wisdom with him is now over. He was the most wonderful father, end quote. And Adele says she's finally ready to take the stage in Vegas. The singer announced her residency will kick off in November and run through March. 
Adele was originally supposed to perform at Caesars Palace back in January, but the shows were canceled at the last minute because of coronavirus. Tickets to the new shows will go on sale in August. Hey, it's Tamron Hall coming up. Selling Sunset's Chriselle Staus is back with us again to talk about how she separates the reality show from real life. That's coming up. We'll see you soon. I love that show, Selling Sunset, and I like Chriselle. You can watch Tamron Hall today at 3 here on Fox Carolina. Then be sure to stay tuned for the 4 o'clock news. 920 now, still ahead. The housing market is starting to cool on off. We'll have a look at the latest numbers when we come back. And health experts have a warning for parents and caregivers. As people try to save money, there seems to be an increase of counterfeit car seats on the market. We'll have much more on what buyers need to be aware. Right now we head outside, give you a live look at Clemson. Good morning to Tigertown on this Tuesday morning. Still dealing with that cloud cover, but we're hearing across the upstate there is a break in some of those clouds. We're seeing some more sunshine. When well, we could see some sunshine here and just across most of the area, you got to keep it locked right here to the morning news on Fox Carolina. Nine twenty three now Fox Carolina is committed to you. Do you want to remind you of this and we're getting some tips on how to keep your child safe while riding in the car. There's a special technique to making sure your kid's car seat is safely secured. And Bridget Watson is a program coordinator at Bradshaw Institute with Prisma Health. She offers free advice to parents and caregivers on how to properly install a car seat. She tells us riding in a car brings a lot of risks for kids. Motor vehicle crashes are still one of the leading cause of deaths for children ages 1 to 13. Um, so it's super important that families um, know the ins and outs of their car seats and feel comfortable with the install of their seat. The Bradshaw Institute is available to perform car seat inspections at different fire stations throughout the month. They're also available at Greenville Memorial Hospital Monday through Friday by appointment only.
And when it comes to buying a car seat, you are looking for one that is guaranteed to offer certain protections. But officials at one hospital say they've encountered dozens of counterfeit car seats. This morning, reporter Mandy Gaither has more on what to look for to know the difference. In the car, it's the best way to keep a baby safe. But some parents may unknowingly be putting their children in counterfeit car seats. These seats are not protecting the kids like they should. Since January, officials at Orlando Health say they've identified 27 counterfeit car seats and 11 foreign seats discovered as they help parents strap their new baby in before leaving the hospital. A counterfeit car seat is a car seat that is non-regulated anywhere and is made somewhere and isn't crash tested. But a foreign car seat is a car seat that is crash tested maybe in, the, in Europe, but those standards don't meet the U.S. standards. To make sure your car seat is safe, check the straps and anchoring parts. Officials say knockoffs may not have lower anchor attachments or a chest clip. Look out for paperwork. A car seat manual and registration card are included in all federally compliant car seats in the U.S. And read the labels. A federally compliant seat will have a warning label showing it complies with federal motor vehicle safety standards. If it does not have any of those labels in English and Spanish, if the labels are in another language, um, that can be an indication that it is a counterfeit car seat. Hospital officials say many of these car seats are bought online through third-party vendors. And if the price is too good to be true, it probably is. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And many times when counterfeit car seats are discovered, parents cannot get a hold of the vendors that sold them and don't have a way to get their money back. Hospital officials urge parents in this situation to make reports. You can do that at stopfakes.gov. Well, big updates on the economy coming this week as experts brace for a possible recession. We'll have the latest and we are taking a look at the next steps in downtown Greenville development. We'll have more on what could be happening at one site that has been empty for years. A live look for you over Lake Hartwell as we head to break. You're watching Fox Carolina committed to you.
You're watching Fox Carolina, the morning news. Welcome back to the morning news on Fox Carolina, right on time. We're live on Wall Street as that opening bell is signaling the start of trading for this Tuesday. And the Fed is on the verge of another big interest rate hike kicking off a meeting in Washington today. New consumer confidence numbers also are coming out this morning. As Doug Luzader reports from Capitol Hill, it all comes as the president prepares for what could be his final day in COVID isolation. Now, the president is feeling better, but consumers are another matter, facing higher prices and the possibility of a recession in the months ahead. That's got us. Them. Choose carefully. There are more signs now that consumers are having some second thoughts about what they're buying. Walmart says higher prices are now discouraging shoppers as inflation ripples through the country. It's still a lingering cough for the president, but he did remotely answer a few questions about the economy. We're not going to be in a recession, uh, in my view. And that is the line from the White House. Despite what GDP numbers may indicate later this week, the economy is not in a recession and the administration points to the low unemployment rate. Those indicators do not show uh, that we are, are in a recession or even a pre-recession. Uh, they can try to redefine it all they want. The Republicans say the White House is ignoring reality. But the critical question now is how the Fed sees things. In a two-day meeting kicking off today, they'll have to decide whether to raise interest rates with a big three-quarters of a point jump widely expected. As for the president, he could wrap up his COVID isolation after today. I'm feeling great. You know, I've had two full nights of sleep all the way through. Uh, matter of fact, uh, my dog had to wake me up this morning. And if he tests negative for COVID, he'll be out of isolation tomorrow, just as the Fed announces their decision on interest rates. In Washington, I'm Doug Luzader for Fox Carolina, The Morning News. And with those rising mortgage rates and high prices, they're continuing to discourage potential home buyers. The Federal Reserve has raised interest rates to reduce demand and try to bring down inflation already, but mortgage applications have dropped significantly and rates are higher than they were this time last year. According to mortgage buyer Freddie Mac, the average rate for a 30-year mortgage was about 2.78% last year. Now it's more than two percentage points higher. The sale of homes that were previously occupied have also dropped for five months in a row. We sent it over to First Alert meteorologist Brian Bachman for another look at the forecast and the the hottest part of summer just keeps rolling on, doesn't it? Yeah, we're really rolling into the dog days here at this point. Uh, no major change from day to day in the overall forecast. Hot, humid each day, including today. Still those chances for storms. We're starting to work back against those stubborn clouds that have been hanging out over much of the upstate this morning. So some sun managing to punch on through and also some of that mountain sunshine finally working back against that stubborn fog we've had in some of those areas. And we're warming up quickly. 80 degrees already in Lawrence, up to 81 in Newberry as well as Anderson. Greenville as well. And our mountain locations into the low and mid 70s, Asheville 73, Brevard and Hendersonville, both up to 75 right now. And hey, wouldn't you know, in some cases that's pretty close to what our dew point is. So humidity levels actually creeping up a bit compared to yesterday. And that's why we expect for this afternoon uh, storms will be a bit more uh, commonplace, uh, less isolated than they were at times yesterday uh, in the upstate expect at least a few storms to pop up this afternoon. High temps climbing to around 90 degrees and with the humidity probably feeling closer to about 94 95 at times. Also expect scattered storms in the mountains this afternoon. Your high is in the mid 80s with a real feel closer to the upper 80s. We'll take a closer look at those storms coming up in about 10 minutes. 933 now here's what's developing this morning. Spartanburg City Council is planning for the future of Morgan Square. Just last night, the council passed a resolution creating a committee which will study and discuss how to redevelop Morgan Square. What well, the council says it hopes to use the committee to change the downtown area to meet the needs of citizens and businesses. And we actually got a chance to catch up with the city manager who tells us this is about changing as the community grows. Morgan Square has been the heart of downtown Spartanburg for, for generations. As the community has evolved and as downtown Spartanburg has become more vibrant, more active, uh, we're considering some uh, physical enhancements to the space um, and maybe making some uh, uh, changes to that, uh, that area to make it better serve the modern needs of, of, of Spartanburg. Certainly a story we'll be staying on top of. I do want to tell you this. The changes recommended by the committee would be non-binding, non that is. We will continue to follow this story as it develops.
Well, plans for a big old development in downtown Greenville are heading to the next phase. This is a look at a proposed mixed-use apartment building in downtown Greenville. The proposal was just approved by the city's design review board. It would revamp the area where the old Greenville Memorial Auditorium used to sit. And as Fox Carolina's Kennedy Harris reports, this isn't the first time an idea has been proposed for that site, but this one is part of a much bigger plan. We're so full of energy and enthusiasm on event nights. And then on non-event nights, it's a more quiet part of town. Coming off of I-385 into downtown, only one thing might catch your eye. We're honored to be the first thing you see when you enter into downtown Greenville. The Bon Secours Arena has been the staple entryway into downtown, but soon that might change and more than trees could be sprouting on this empty lot. I am extremely excited and um, eager to see what will develop on that on that old site. The proposal calls for a mixed use 300 unit apartment development, restaurants, retail and business space at the bottom. There's not really tons over there to draw people except for Bunch of course. So uh, having some some areas over there that will uh, draw foot traffic whenever there isn't a show going on, I think will be very nice. But it's the same story different year. In 2014, a similar four story unit called Broadstone Gateway was on the table. There have been several attempts over the years to do something with the property, but none of them have panned out. This proposal would not only get rid of the blighted lot, but it would create an entertainment district for the entryway into downtown. The connectivity between the development and the arena seems to be of great importance. The idea is to make the area an art and entertainment district. The apartment proposal falls in line with the city's plan to make the gateway into downtown more pedestrian friendly. You know, traffic will get a little bit worse, but that's something that we can definitely work around. But just a block away, Clay Howard says more traffic just means more business. I'm hoping to, you know, see some new faces and uh, maybe get some new regulars as well from uh, the people that are going to be living around the corner. And the plan has to be reviewed again by the Design and Review Board. They've asked the developers to bring back more specific site plan details, traffic analysis, and other elements as well. We'll keep you up to date as plans for this proposal continue to develop. Well, right now it's 937. Voters in North Carolina are heading back to the polls this morning to cast their ballots in the primary runoff elections. Polls are now open until 730 tonight. We've listed a few of the races on the ballot today. You see them there on the right-hand side of your screen. You can find complete coverage on our website. That's foxcarolina.com. And the Blood Connection is teaming with Outback Steakhouse to encourage more people to donate. The center says they have a critical need for all blood types right now. The Blood Connection supplies more than 100 hospitals across the Carolinas and in Georgia. And on Thursday, mobile blood donation units will be at several Outback Steakhouses across the area. These are the locations you see right there on your screen. Now, everyone who donates, keep this in mind, will get a $20 gift card and a coupon for a free Bloomin' Onion. You can go to the Blood Connections website to make an appointment. It is time for What's New Now. It's when I debut some new, fun, and exciting things for you, your friends, and your family to do. So up first, let's talk Tipsy Gypsy. They're in Clinton, and it's a boutique where you can shop formal gowns and wedding dresses and more. And also, got to tell you this, Tipsy Gypsy also hosts events, and during these times, you can sip and shop. Check out Tipsy Gypsy in Clinton. They're at 105 East Main Street. Up next, Eclectic in the South. With the nice weather we've been having this week, you might consider getting outside. If this is you, you got to check out Eclectic in the South. It's an outdoor flea market, and they're located at 726 Lowndes Hill Road. That's Sweet G in Greenville. And looking ahead to the fall, get ready for what's being called a unique dining experience. We're talking about rudimentary, and it's coming to Lawrence this fall, y'all. So check this out when it comes. And if you have something new that you'd like for me to feature, just let us know on our website. That's foxcarolina.com. You've still got time to take part in the Fox Carolina School Supply Jam, and we'd love to have you join us. We have partnered with Ingalls to collect school supplies so students and teachers across our area can get the school year started right. Drop-off boxes are located at more than 40 Ingalls stores across the area, along with our Fox Carolina studios. You can scan that QR code right now to see the full list. Everything we collect stays in the community, and we do thank you for helping us out with this school supply jam.
Lowe's is giving entrepreneurs and businesses a chance to have their products sold in its stores. The home improvement retailer announced its first ever Into the Blue Lowe's product pitch event. Selected applicants will get the chance to pitch their products to a Lowe's representative at the company's tech hub in Charlotte. Those chosen to move on then will pitch to the retailer's leadership for a chance to become an actual supplier for Lowe's. That application is on the Lowe's website until August 14th is your deadline. Or you could just win a life-changing jackpot. That is up for grabs tonight. You just got to match those lucky numbers. The Mega Millions jackpot now sits at $810 million, making it the fourth largest jackpot in game history. The cash option is roughly $470 million. And remember, you can watch that drawing live tonight right here on Fox Carolina. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham says he's got a solution to the pilot shortage that's plaguing airlines and travelers. We'll hear what he proposes and why some say it won't work. And you hear about the sleeplessness, fatigue, and hot flashes, but there are lesser known side effects to hormone imbalances. We'll talk about those and some solutions. The Morning News is back after this. The following segment is sponsored by Renew Health and Wellness. Most people know that hormone depletion might come with sleeplessness, fatigue, hot flashes, and weight gain. And it can all start happening in our 30s, but there are a lot more side effects than most people even realize. Anna Marie Cantrell is here from Renew Health and Wellness to talk about it. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, our hormones have a major impact on our overall health and well-being. We've talked about that. First, give us the general overview of what happens when hormone production decreases for, for women and for men. Sure, yeah, men and women both. We start, our bodies start producing less and less hormones as we age. We can see um, these deficiencies pop up as early as you know, our early 30s. By late 30s, we're usually depleted, if not deficient, in one, if not all, of our three main hormones that we need to kind of keep our bodies working with us. And there are some lesser known side effects that a lot of people might not realize. Walk us through some of the lesser known side effects. Sure, well, you know, a lot of people know about hot flashes and we talk about mood swings and things like that. But 
um, when it comes down to it, even things like anxiety, not sleeping well at night, weight control issues, um, things like that that can really affect us in the long term. So we want to make sure that we address those. That a lot of times it can be hormones. Yeah, and, and people are comfortable talking about this now. Hormone replacement therapy is becoming mainstream uh, for both women and men. And at Renew Health and Wellness, you use bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, not synthetic hormones. Uh, right. Tell us why that matters. Sure. Well, you know, with the synthetic hormones, we're putting a lot of things in our body that maybe we don't want. We see some um, unpleasant side effects that can be um, a result of these synthetics. So with the bioidenticals, they're, you know, they're biologically identical to the hormones that our bodies are still making, or just not making enough of. Um, so when we reintroduce them into our, sim our system after a little bit of an adjustment period, it's just like feeling like you're 20 or 30 again. It's yep. amazing. And you love to hear about these, uh, these life-changing outcomes. What kind of reactions do you get from people who've undergone the treatment? Uh, what are they telling you? My favorite is you changed my life, yep. <laughs> which is not me at all. It's not, it's not anything. It's just, you know, when we get our hormones balanced, we feel like we have our lives back again so people our patients want to go hiking they want to go you know do things with their family they want to interact with their grandkids again so um, you know their reactions are really what makes it worth it and they you know our patients are just they love it and it's just I can't say enough about you know how how happy they are and just how life-changing it really is and you can do a lot for people at Renew Health and Wellness you also offer medically monitored weight loss program as well as aesthetics treatments and yeah. you promote total wellness overall anything else you want people to know about the practice before we go so no I mean we want to focus on the whole total you so once we have you feeling better inside a lot of times our patients will choose some aesthetics procedures that kind of yep. helps represent the change that they've underwent um, feeling vivacious and vibrant again and they want to be able to show the world that so whether it is the clean start weight loss vitamin injections or aesthetics procedures renew health and wellness will be there for our patients each step of the way yeah, you want to look as good as you feel um, Absolutely. and anybody watching can take that hormone health test online at renewmetoday.com or they can call for a free consultation to see if they're a candidate for hormone replacement therapy. The number is on screen. Anna Marie, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Now your Fox Carolina first alert weather. 946 now here on your Tuesday morning as things start to heat up. We break into some sunshine here now on first alert radar as those stubborn morning clouds over the upstate begin to thin on out from here on out. It's going to be another hot and especially humid afternoon. We've really seen the levels actually come up here over the course of the morning, and that's going to fuel a more widespread round of some showers and storms this afternoon. But still, at least for now, things are on the quiet side. We continue to watch this stalled frontal boundary snaking its way from the mid Atlantic states back into the center. Central U.S. Big weather headline out of St. Louis this morning is uh, over eight inches of rain that has fallen in that city alone since uh, midnight last night, and that already is enough to set their all-time uh, wettest day on record, and it is still raining in that area. You can see right now. Now I tell you all that because that rain. Fortunately, is not expected to trickle its way down toward us here in the Western Carolinas. It's going to stay much closer to where this boundary is, but we still get some instability from that boundary breaking away into the Western Carolinas. So that's where more of our storms will come from later today on uh, future track here. Next 24 hours, we go to the 10 o'clock hour to noon quickly around lunchtime, seeing a lot of these uh, flare up showers and storms beginning a lot of them bubbling up in the mountains, especially toward the western side of the region first, but a few isolated pop ups as early as lunchtime possible, even in parts of the upstate. State. From there, hit or miss variety storms upstate and in the mountains all afternoon into this evening around six o'clock. So some of you may still encounter some heavy downpours on your drive home later today or potentially at least encounter some wet roads left behind. The torrential downpours could lead to some localized flooding and uh, while some storms have the potential to become severe, mainly from Greenville on northward, just about every storm that does develop today will be capable of the heavy downpours and likely produce a lot of lightning. So stay weather aware all the same. And then as we head into tomorrow, we'll watch for another outbreak of some storms. More of them, though, focused on the mountains on our Wednesday. And remember that severe weather threat uh, uh, threat that is is in play from Greenville on northward into this afternoon and this evening. Rest of your forecast here upstate 91 today and staying in the 90s all the way through the start of the weekend each day featuring that chance for isolated to scattered storms straight on through the start of August on Monday and for the mountains pretty much the same story just slightly milder your highs running all the way through the low to mid 80s through the next seven days. Ashley. All right, Brian, well, thank you so much. It is 949 now, and as travelers deal with more frustrations over canceled flights, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham says he's got a plan to help prevent the problem. Senator Graham says the key to keeping flights in the air is by raising the retirement age of pilots. And Fox Carolina's Myra Ruiz actually got a chance to catch up with him during his stop in the upstate to hear more about his plan. 
The big red C word. Some air travelers say they're getting sick of seeing it. When you can't do anything about it. And when I end up missing a half a day or a day, it's a big deal for me. Senator Lindsey Graham is trying to help with his Let Experience Pilots Fly Act. And you know why I'm doing this? I'm fed up as an air traveler. What got me going was in one day I had five or six flights, I can't remember, canceled. The legislation would raise the retirement age for pilots from 65 to 67. So my legislation is trying to allow people to fly if they meet the medical qualifications until they're 67. By 2026, 14,000 pilots are going to be kicked out of the cockpit for no good reason in my view. You know, I'm 67. I don't think I'm going to take up flying, but I'm pretty good shape. Graham's bill would also help keep regional airports like GSP in better shape, according to an industry representative. Regional airlines are the exclusive source of passenger air service for two-thirds of the nation's airports. Despite passenger demand returning to 2019 levels, 71 percent of airports, or 315 airports, have lost flights since 2019. That includes a 17 percent drop at GSP. Without this change, it's only going to get worse. Not everyone agrees. The Airline Pilots Association says pushing a, quote, false pilot shortage narrative aims at shifting attention away from some airlines' inability to effectively manage operations, and that increasing pilots' retirement age will actually displace pilots and make air travel more risky. Meantime, some displaced travelers are taking things in stride. Well, I really prayed about this trip, and I have a lot of peace that this is where I need to be. And Senator Graham also suggested looking into alternative training for pilots that would help increase the pool of those who are available to fly commercial airlines. Right now it's 951. Let's head outside and give you a live look at Mural Inlet looking absolutely stunning on this Tuesday morning. As you get ready to head out the door, it is 951. We are back after a quick break. You're watching The Morning News on Fox Carolina.
We're back at 9.54, and we're now going to roll that beautiful bean footage because <laughs> the Bush Beans Museum mm. is welcoming visitors again. Can you believe it? I see what you did there. Um, five months under remodel. The attraction is located at the same site as the original Bush Beanery Shop. Actually, it's general, but not the general <laughs> shop of the early 1900s. Some new upgrades include an interactive digital shelf, virtual plant tours, the production process, and other incredibly tasteful exhibits, mm -hmm. according to museum officials. So after you've seen the big ball of twine, that's even bigger. That looks kind of cool. Yeah. Um, the end of an era in ice cream, too. The Ooh. Choco Taco. Going extinct. Get one while you can, huh? That's, that's criminal. Yeah, it's too bad. The, the Klondike made the sad announcement Tuesday that Choco Taco, as many of us know, is made with vanilla ice cream, taco-shaped waffle cone topped with chocolate peanuts. <sighs> I am just... <sighs> Heartbroken. It's it what's just, been a favorite for so many decades. Back in 1983, it rolled out. Klondike is working on other products instead, but it's not the same. I could really cry. I'm really about trying that to one. ruin my Tuesday. Yes, Choco Taco has Thanks. gotten me through a lot. We didn't mean to get all heavy on you at the yeah. end of the show because, you know, it's not all bad out there <laughs> yeah. if you like heat and sunshine. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. before it goes extinct and people want to get a Choco Taco, today would be a good day oh, to do yeah. it to beat the heat. Buy up as many as you can yeah. and enjoy them on these hot, <laughs> humid days. Yeah, while well, you can grab them. Uh, keep them in your freezer. Maybe you could, you know, sell them. I'm sure they're going to go up in value now. Uh, high staying in the 90s through the start of the weekend. Upstate will be in the 80s through the next week in the mountains, too. Uh, each day, region-wide, uh, seeing uh, at least some isolated to scattered storms. But stay as Especially vigilant today, some of the storms from Greenville northward have the potential to become severe, so keep an eye on those skies. All right, Brian, we thank you so much. And to the folks at home, we thank you so much for being with us on The Morning News as you watch Fox Carolina. And please don't forget to join us this afternoon at 4, 5, and 6. We hope you all have a great day, and we'll see you all tomorrow on the news starting at 4.30. And don't forget to follow us on our website, that's foxcarolina.com, and also download that free Fox Carolina News app. Take care. Sure, if that's a yeah, word. Well, the word general and bean were the general. Oh, I thought you should call it a beanery. Uh, beanery. If anybody writes, I'm going to say, you had to be there. It just, it's yeah. nothing. It's just you had to be there. I'm coming, Kendall. It's like if you're not supposed to laugh in church or something, you just yeah. get funnier. <laughs> Yeah. It's a seven hour. Thank you so much. You're human. We all just find something really random funny sometimes. Yes. So people hey, like to see that side. I also demand an explanation on why they're discontinuing this thing. Like, are, okay. are sales down? Are they just tired of making it? I don't know. You know, let's dig into this. We're supposed to be wash dogs. What's going on with that chocolate taco? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll rest. Ugh. That's like childhood. That's a yeah, bad move. Upset, of man. all the things to get rid of, you could have got rid of Cool Ranch Doritos, barbecue Pringles, mm -hmm. like all the issue. trash stuff. I'm gonna take taco, issue with taco? that first one, yeah. but, but you take fine. Issue with the first? Fine, you don't like them. I respect that. <laughs> taco Bell's still on my list for the chili cheese burrito, the Cholito. Ooh. Oh, now, Margaret, yeah. I know you're a huge fan of that one. You keep bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, some days we do, some days we don't, but usually we do a tease. Um, this will air during the evening shows. So, yeah, but it, it teases ahead to the morning show during the evening show. So, uh, the way I'll probably tee this up is, uh, you know, yeah, it's been another hot, humid day. We've been tracking some storms and looks like we're going to keep on doing that into the weekend. You know, something like that. Um, They've been wanting us to. We used Kendra to call it a topical at my last I, station, too. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. Topical, same thing. Um, the only reason I frame it up this way is because I guess they ask that we try to tease something specific that we'll have the next day. So we don't have anything for Wednesdays. What's happening today in the evening and then the next day? Why, girl? Like, you talk about what's happening, like, that day in the evening, like, and then the next day you tease, right? You're teasing the next day. Or just focus on the next day. Just really, you're you're teasing the next day, but like, okay. I'll I'm do just kind of like a with that because generalization if there's more demand, of kind of, that means people want I mean, more of it you don't and know you just what's don't happening get rid of it. During the shows right now when, when it airs, but right. I kind of pretend like, oh, you know, it's been another hot, yeah. humid day. Just yeah. a quick I'd generalization, but then into a, you know, 
we're looking ahead to more. And Hello. I'll have that in your forecast starting tomorrow at 4.30 or, you know, we're uh, here, we'll girl. have everything you need to know, including <laughs> your dog walking forecast. Like, just pick okay. something kind of specific. Okay. They like it to kind of be a... Okay. <laughs> um, Kendall, you got the script for what's new? Not what's new, um, um, the tease. Okay, cool. She's slapping it in there. And then we're going to get our party on in just a moment. There we go. Three, two... Hey everyone, it's Ashley Garrett with The Morning News on Fox Carolina. Coming up tomorrow, look, we know now more than ever, you're concerned about your money. So that's why you should tune in to our Money Matters Report on Smart Investments. Brian. Well, Ashley, of course, it has been another hot, humid day here in the Western Carolinas, complete with a few storms. And it looks like that same pattern intent on sticking around as we head into the upcoming weekend. So we'll take an early look at that forecast, plus a look at your golfing forecast. And you join us tomorrow morning starting at 4.30. at 8 a.m., but it didn't run at 8 a.m., so we got it in at the 9, but it'll run again sec on the second time at 4 p.m., so I'm recording so that that can happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Okay. Three, two. Well, it's time for what's new. It's when I debut some new, fun, and exciting things for you, your friends, and family to do. So, up first, let's talk Tipsy Gypsy. They're in Clinton. It's a boutique where you can shop formal gowns and wedding dresses, but that's not all. Tipsy Gypsy also hosts events, and during these times, you can sip and shop. Check out this store in Clinton at 105 East Main Street. Up next, Eclectic in the South. With the nice weather we've been having this week, you might consider getting outside. If this is you, check out Eclectic in the South, an outdoor flea market. They're located at 726 Lowndes Hill Road, that's Sweet G and Greenville. And looking ahead to the fall, get ready for what's being called a unique dining 